everyone, and welcome back to the Cabral Concept. I'm Stephen Cabral, board certified naturopathic doctor, and on today's Friday review, I'm really looking forward to sharing with you one of my favorite doctors of all time. He did some really brilliant work, I would say in the mid to late 1900s, and his work is really carried on to this day. I hope to do him justice by talking about him today, some of his books, and a lot of the achievements he created within natural health, meaning like they weren't his, just like they're none of ours, right? These are thousand year old practices. But what he did was he brought them forward and into the forefront of natural health and natural healing. So his name, without further ado, is Dr. Bernard Jensen. Really brilliant, brilliant guy. He started his career as a chiropractor way back in 1929. He had a long, really distinguished career as a uh, doctor of chiropractic, as well as a, I know he was a nutritionist and also a PhD, I believe, in nutrition or natural healing as well. So one of the most remarkable things I believe about um, Dr. Uh, Jensen was the volume of work that he's left behind. So there's a lot of other doctors that I've personally studied. I find them absolutely amazing. But what they left behind was really a lot of success stories. They left behind a lot of maybe their methods, but not the actual research, data, photographic details, meaning like Dr. Jensen literally showed his success stories. He showed people eliminating massive amounts of parasites and healing all sorts of skin-based conditions. And I believe that's one of the reasons why I'm able to help people when others can't get that same level of success maybe with the patient, even though they're trying their absolute best. And one of the reasons is this, and I really want to press a point upon this point because I know I have so many Naturopathic doctors, brilliant, brilliant minds out there, as well as MDs, functional medicine doctors, health practitioners, nutritionists, you name it, even some great yoga practitioners, which are using Ayurveda in their practice. So here's the thing is that, and again, I'm totally included with this because I'm big on functional medicine lab testing. I love modern medicine. I love the science of all those things. Of course, I don't love pharmaceutical drugs, but I love the advanced testing. We can sometimes bypass the fundamentals of natural health and we kind of can't see the trees through the forest, as they say. So I believe that's how that saying goes. And so here's the thing. We miss the larger constructs of the human body. And what Dr. Jensen got right was understanding that the, you, cannot have, you cannot have optimal health without literally a proper functioning colon and small intestine. And so even though he is this massive, this massive book, which I loved reading, I actually read it twice, which says something about me. It's called The Chemistry of Man. It's probably about 800 pages long. Love the book. I thought it was great. It, I mean, really, if you're a health practitioner, you have to check out that book. I'll do a review on that book another day. Today's book that I want to talk about, and then I want to share with you something I call the Clean Colon Power Pack, which I've never shared before, just a really simple way this week, because so many people have been asking about H. pylori, food poisoning, nauseous when they eat, all sorts of just stomach-based issues as well, what you can do to really alleviate that. But no, I mean, I want to really link this up with a book as well. So the book is called Tissue Cleansing Through Bowel Management by Dr. Bernard Jensen. It's called the With the Ultimate Tissue Cleansing System. So here's the thing. I love the older books, the old school books. It's funny, but my wife has no idea what to shop for me, you know, for holidays now or anything like that. Because honestly, there's, there's, I'm not saying like I have a lot of items because that's not the kind of guy that I am, but I don't just don't really want or need a lot of things. Like there's just not a lot that I'm into, but I love, I love these old, old books. This one's not too old, but it is what about 40 years old now. But some of the ones that I have are like, before the 1950s, they have the old, you know, beautiful hardcovers on them. A lot of them are in the 1800s. They're written in like the older style of uh, English prose. Really, I, I love all those books. When I went to India, I came back with a suitcase full of books you could only get over there. So love these types of books. And really, if you're a health practitioner and you've been reading a lot of the, you know, Amazon or New York Times bestsellers, that's great. And you should. There's no doubt about it. I like to read everything. I read those. I like to see what people are reading. So I'm, I'm trying to catch up on those too. 
But I go back and I really study these old school naturopaths or natural hygienists as they were in the kind of the more and the longer I practice. I really just, I associate more with that, even though again, like I'm on PubMed, I'm reading the latest research and I'm really kind of geeking out with the exact milligrams of dosage to use for certain supplements because I want it to match up with the research. I want people to get the exact results they're looking for. Always tweaking that, always tweaking really advanced stuff with my own, own protocols as well for myself. But I continue to go back and I continue to read these 30, 40, 50, 100-year-old books because there's so many gems in them that we've lost. They've kind of been, they need to be rediscovered. So today's book, what I want to do is just take one minute to really share with you the process in this book of how food moves through your stomach. So not a lot of people are aware of really just how food moves through them. And I think that's just vitally, vitally important. So I know typically in the Friday review, I'm just talking about you know, a book or I'm just doing talking about a supplement. But what I'd like to do today is just give you a little bit more background into the understanding of this digestive system and how it can really work to your advantage. Okay, so let's get right into it. Essentially, what I'm doing is showing you how food moves through the intestinal tract. And so if you're dealing with any of the constipation that we talked about earlier in the week, in the week or even loose stool, or you had food poison in the past, you suspect H. pylori, SIBO, Crohn's, colitis. Listen to this. This is very, very interesting. I said the food should move through your digestive tract in about 12 to 24 hours. Okay, if not, it's going to lead to a host of issues within your body, namely headaches, brain fog, skin issues, of all kinds, learning disabilities, literally, you name it, it can happen because there's really nothing more important than how your digestive system functions. It's a center of inflammation, systemic-based inflammation in your immune system. So here's the thing. He's saying just this is ideal world. You're having breakfast at 8 a.m., and digestion immediately begins to, to start. At noon, four hours after ingestion, food has reached the ileum, an ileocecal valve. That means it's moved through most of your small intestine already. Now, again, this comes with a couple caveats, meaning like you chewed your food very well or you're eating what he recommends as well as I recommend, which is a very light, easy to digest breakfast. Because again, you just woke up. I'm not going to do a, a teaching lesson on that, but I will certainly again in the future. By 1 p.m., breakfast residue passing through the ileocecal valve. Again, that's where the small intestine meets the large intestine right above that appendix. And then lunch now, about four hours, five hours later after breakfast, is now in the stomach. At 5 p.m., that's about four hours after having lunch, your lunch is now moving, again, through that small intestine, getting ready to move into the colon. By 10 o'clock that night, you should basically have had your second bowel movement of the day later in the day, or maybe even just your first if you don't have a morning evacuation, as they used to call it when I was over in India. They always called it an evacuation. At 6 a.m., the morning of the second day, dinner residue, which means the leftover dinner, is now in the pelvic colon ready to be discharged, which essentially means most natural health practitioners are saying you should have one to two bowel movements per day, one earlier in the day, and then later in the afternoon or evening as needed. And so really, I, I think that's a, a good little construct, maybe a little faster bowel transit time than a lot of people do have, just because of the amount of um, heavier protein that people are, are currently consuming. So back in every time, except literally modern times, most people would not have meat uh, three times a day. That is a modern construct. That is not paleo. That is not a normal human nutrition diet. Again, I'm not saying go vegan. I'm not saying be a vegetarian. Totally great if you want to do any one of those things. But I can tell you this, I don't want to go on a tangent, but meat three times a day is not a healthy human diet. I can tell you that for sure. Okay. So I'm going to just move on past this book, but really, I couldn't help. That's why I love reviewing these books. I love pulling them out of my personal library and going over them. I couldn't help but give you this. Rules for eating. I'm telling you, I mentioned these same exact things, and it's so funny that I haven't, I haven't looked at this book in years. He says, do not fry foods or use heated oils. If not entirely comfortable in mind and body from the previous mealtime, you should miss the next meal, which means like, if you still feel like you have food in your stomach and you're bloated, don't put more food on top of that. Do not eat 
eat unless you have a keen desire for the plainest food, which means, again, eat normal whole foods. Don't have to, don't have to really put all sorts of different things on it. Do not eat beyond your needs, which means don't fill your stomach for the sake of filling your stomach. Be sure to eat thoroughly, masticate your food, which means chew it all up. Don't swallow it like a seagull, I always say. And number six, miss meals if in pain, emotionally upset, not hungry, chilled, overheated, or during acute illness. Again, we always think we need to be putting food in our stomach, I'm telling you. Overeating has forget about weight gain. Overeating leads to poor health. I was going to give it to you today. I'm going to give it to you in the future. His food healing laws, because again, I'm such a big believer in these things. Couldn't believe it when I'm rereading it over. Uh, he's saying the same thing. He most likely studied Ayurvedic medicine. I'd have to look more into that. But these are things that are just panned it down, really, from generation to generation. Remarkable book. Very, very short, 135 pages, very small book to read. If you're a health practitioner, amazing. Even if you're not, you just want to learn more about your health. It talks about enemas in the book, talks about colonics, different things like that. I'm not saying you have to do that, but just overall great. And reading the back of his book, there he goes. He studied Ayurvedic medicine in India. So there you have it. Again, these are Ayurvedic principles that have been around for thousands of years. Okay, so what I want to do now is share with you if you don't want to do the colonics, you don't want to do the enemas, you don't want to do any of those things, very, very simple. We'll link them up in the show notes. I've talked about enemas in the past. I've talked about colonics in the past. Am I an advocate of doing them on a consistent basis? No. Am I an advocate if you have psoriasis, if you have eczema, if you have skin-based issues, potential parasites, of doing those until you get better? Absolutely. Am I an advocate of doing those if you have a, a real illness or you have cancer? Absolutely. Yes, I am, 100%. But once you get well, I don't think that you need to continue on with colonics and you don't need to continue on with enemas. You could certainly do some as maintenance as on an enema style if you'd like to, meaning like a coffee enema to help to detoxify that liver. But again, I don't believe that you need to do those specific things in order to be a healthy individual. What I do believe that you should continue to do and something that I do myself is a once to twice a year intestinal cleanse. And I think that this is ultimately really important. So here it is. I'm just I'm naming it today the Clean Colon Power Pack because for whatever reason that name just rolled off my tongue and I needed to put it out there. Plus natural health has to be fun. You know, it's so complicated, it's so complex. We need to enjoy it a little bit and you know, I certainly do try to especially with all of the, you know, the, the sick people that I'm meeting with and they really need help. We, at the same time, everyone's going to get better. We want to help everyone get better, but we need to sometimes make a little light of it and that helps in the long run. It has to be a little bit playful. So here's the thing. Here's what I recommend. Very simple, very straightforward. If you did not listen to Wednesday's show, episode 530, stevencabral.com forward slash 530. And the episode before that, stevencabral.com forward slash 529. Those two were on the food poisoning fix and H. pylori treatments. And the next one was how to cure constipation. So really, really timely, I believe. And now the follow-up is, well, what do we do now just to clean out the colon without having to do an enema, colonic, or any of those things? Well, here's my advice to you. Again, you can do the colonics, you can do the enemas. I have no problems with that. What I want to say is once or twice a year for maintenance, this is what I do. This is now what I'm recommending you do as well. So it's the intestinal cleanse. Very, very simple. We have Dr. Schultz's intestinal formula one and two, and then the clean gut probiotic. Can't recommend that enough. So what you're doing is our protocol, and ours is different than Dr. Schultz's. It's just, it's easier. That's the bottom line. Here's the thing. I work with busy people. They can't stay home all day to do colonics and cleanses. So this is something that you can do. You can go to work, no problem. You're not going to be running to the toilet, anything like that. What it does is it literally pulls bacteria, parasites, fecal matter that's just encrusted on the colon. And I know that this is kind of a you know nasty subject to talk about, but really we need to pull these things out of, off of our colon in order to be healthy and absorb more of the nutrients we do need and not to reabsorb toxins. So this is a very simple seven-day intestinal cleanse that again, you don't have to stay home. You don't have to worry about any of those things. It's just going to lead to two to three bowel movements per day, larger bulk uh, movements in your stool. It uses Ayurvedic herbs, as well as it uses bentonite clay, some activated charcoal, really amazing things to help to detoxify the small intestine and colon as well. And so that's what I recommend. Very simple, very straightforward. And then after that, you're going to continue on for the next three weeks with your clean gut probiotic, simply just taking one a day every morning when you wake up. That continues to push out pathogenic yeast, and it is a 
full strain, small intestine, and large intestine probiotic. Absolutely fantastic. That is something that I highly recommend doing. And you could do this after your candida and bacterial overgrowth protocol, before it, any time of the year. I just simply pick twice a year to do it. Typically, if I've gone away on vacation for a while, I've eaten a little bit more richer foods, anything like that, I'm going to do this intestinal cleanse probably immediately before I do a Dr. Ball detox. That's just typically what I'll do for the seven-day detox. Okay. So, now, if you want to take this to the next level, we talked about this week, this week. I've gotten so many questions on it. We got a lot of questions. We've tried to answer everyone through our support line, but literally doing the healthy gut support. Okay. Healthy gut support. Let me take that back. It's called healthy belly. Healthy belly is the product we're talking about. Healthy belly is the one that contains the mastic gum. Okay. Simply put, Mastic gum is something that can help to kill the H. pylori bacteria. But I think really even more important than that, of course, I'll link up um, Mastic Gum to another company's product. Happy to do that as always because I simply promote the best, promoting Dr. Bernard Jensen today, promoting Dr. Schultz. And if we have the absolute best product uh, for people in this category, then of course, we're going to promote that formula as well. And Healthy Belly really does take the cake. Without a doubt, uh, it is the most complete formula for stomach health, and it helps to remove... H. pylori and other bacteria from the gut wall. Again, it's rebalancing the body. It's not treating any disease. But mastic gum, really what we're looking at, it's a resin, but it comes from the leaves and stems of the mastic tree. And so this is an evergreen type bush, essentially tree. And what it's been used is it's shown to really wipe out on contact the bacteria in the stomach. But here's the other reason why I like the healthy belly. And I like to do this along with it. I'm actually taking healthy belly right right now. So I'm practicing what I preach, uh, not at this very moment, but I'm using that as part of my protocol. And I use it every morning upon waking, and then I use it before bed. Now, for a lot of people, I will say they should take it during mid-breakfast with their smoothie or mid-dinner. And the reason is the zinc in it can make them feel a little nauseous. Again, it's not die-off. It's not like that. What's happening is they just can't hold it down as well. That means you just simply take it with food. No big deal. The bismuth, though, I just have to mention this as well. That is one that helps to coat an irritated stomach lining. So that's why that's one of my favorites as well. Zinc carnosine and just zinc in general, amazing for helping to rebuild the the tissue in general, but namely the lamina propria and the intestinal lining. So that's why I'm a much, I believe that's a much needed product and I'm a huge advocate of that. You could even take zinc carnosine year round if you wanted to. I don't, again, I just use this twice a year. And then berberine, Again, berberine is one of those all-around great products, often referred to as Oregon grape root. That's one of those things that every form of Eastern medicine has. So they have their own forms of berberine. So there's the Chinese herbal medicine. There is Ayurvedic medicine. There's Greek medicine. There is Native American-based medicine. Everyone's using berberine. Like Everyone is using it, and that's because it's a broad spectrum antibacterial and antimicrobial. We use it in in many of our products for the candida and bacterial overgrowth protocol. And this is one that I certainly put into the healthy belly. And that is because uh, of what it does to uh, wipe out bacteria in the stomach, but also how it helps to balance inflammation. It's even great for cholesterol. It's an amazing, amazing product. I'm just a huge advocate of this product, Healthy Belly. But just in general, again, I'm a a product not of Healthy Belly per se. I'm I'm an advocate of mastic gum, zinc, carnosine, berberine, the bismuth in general. It's just absolutely great, great formula. I know that there's a lot of benefits that people will get from this, but even if you didn't want to use that, the intestinal cleanse once or twice a year, just in general, so great for the gut. If you're dealing with constipation right now, you need to use that intestinal cleanse and continue to work on the constipation protocol that I spoke about on Wednesday. And also, also, if you have any type of skin issues, psoriasis, eczema, I know sometimes it, how frustrating it can be. If you haven't gotten the results you want, Keep wiping out all of the bacteria, candida, 
parasites that you may have living in your intestines. Just keep wiping them out, cleansing, wiping them out, wiping them out, using intermittent fasting. And, and really, you will get to the bottom of it eventually. I know that you sometimes have to tweak your diet, removing lectins, sometimes removing meat, sometimes you know removing all these things that can not work properly with your digestive tract. But I'm telling you, you will be able to figure out any health-based issue you were dealing with, mark my words, you absolutely can do that. Does it sometimes happen overnight? No. And I know that's frustrating because we all want overnight results, but you will get there. And using this type of protocol with my now clean colon power pack, we're calling it, I know that you're going to start to see faster results. Thank you everyone for tuning into another Cabral Concept. And I look forward to talking with you again tomorrow during our Cabral House Calls, where we answer each and every one of our community questions that have come in over the past few weeks. Take care. I hope you enjoyed today's show. And as a valued listener, I want to do something special for you during the month of July. One of our private clients' favorite self-massage devices is something called the Myo Ball. What it is is a five-inch round foam ball that you can lie on or sit on to help open up tight hips, glutes, or back muscles. It's absolutely incredible for relieving pain, stiffness, and tightness due to too much sitting or pushing yourself during a hard workout. Many of our clients are so hooked on using this mile ball that they pack it up in their travel bag and take it with them everywhere they go. This is why I want you to experience the same benefits of self-massage using the mile ball and for the first 200 orders over $99 placed in the month of July 2017, I'll be shipping one free right to your door. And we'll even send you a free demonstration video on how to use the mile ball to get the maximum amount of benefits. This offer is valid while supplies last and is for U.S. residents only. This amazing little mile ball will actually ship out separate from your order and will automatically be added to your shopping cart on all qualifying orders. Thank you once again for listening to the Cabral Concept, and I hope to be shipping out your very own mile ball free gift while supplies last.